Hello and welcome back to another RPG Architect tutorial. My name is Bert and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite features of RPG Architect and that is the user interfaces window section customization whatever we're gonna be talking about user interfaces we're gonna create a message box uh, and have show, I'm gonna show you how to get this entity this our lovely little dude here let me zoom in on his face uh, we're gonna show you how to get him talking all right so what I'm gonna do is hit F8 open up the database I'm gonna full screen it and if you scroll down here you'll see uh, just under enemies just above battle we have user interfaces we are going to resize like normal uh, we're gonna do we'll do five just because we'll need a bunch of these at some point um, and yeah here we are this is the user interfaces section I can't stress enough how much fun I have with this it may be a little daunting at first but if you stick with it just like anything uh, it will open itself up to you very quickly and you'll just see just how much control you have over the menus, dialog boxes, etc. in Architect. So, as per usual, you click one of your slots here. It brings up some options. Here are some elements. This is where we're going to get a preview of what we're doing. Uh, you know, like with most other things, first thing we're going to do is name it. I'm going to try to not name it anything too funny just because I know I I get a little goofy with the names. I'm going to try to be a little more serious, but I say a little because I'm going to call this message books. Um, all right, so we have our message books. Right below the name we have user interface type. This is where we define what kind of interface we're working with here. So we have a bunch of different options. Uh, I'm gonna skip dialogue for a moment. We have menu, we have message box, we have shop. Those should all be pretty self-explanatory. Overlay uh, is something for if you want um, just an overlay over top of your, like a HUD. You know, or if you saw the, the architect trailer, there's a section where there's the first person uh, game and you see the hands going. Uh, I definitely didn't just move my hands in real life to try to illustrate that. Um, anyway, overlay is stuff like that. So if you're doing a first person game, you can have your, your gun or your fists or whatever. You do that with an overlay. If you want like health displayed in the corner, you do that with overlay, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, message box is your standard uh, dialog box. That's what we're really going to be focusing on today. But the difference between message box and dialog, this was a question I had, is dialog is for um, if you have a spot where there's like options, like do you want to uh, go to sleep? Yes or no? Are you a boy or a girl? Yes or no? Um, Etc. So that's the difference between message box and dialogue. But like I said, we are going to be focusing on message box. Uh, I guess before I get into that, just below interface types, we have uh, data. You can assign switches or variables to this uh, particular interface. You can assign scripts, uh, either loaded or unloaded to this particular interface. We will get into all this later, but uh, you know, switches and variables might be a little bit more self-explanatory, but I'm just going to click here, loaded really quick. It brings up this window, and then, ooh, we got a bunch of options we can do here. This is where it gets really cool, but we're not going to deal with that today. We don't need to. Just showing you, it gets pretty deep. Um, transitions, this is where, you know, you, you, you bring up the menu and it kind of does a cool like swooshing motion and then you close it and it swooshes out whatever your transitions want to be um, I'm not gonna do anything with that today either just just kind of briefly touching on what all these do below this the we have options depending on what interface type we have selected so you see it says dialogue it gives us options for dialogue 
you select menu, it gives us options for menu, like is this menu cancelable? Does this menu pause the gameplay? Does this menu, or is the scene still rendered in the background? What kind of context is there? Etc. Yeah, shop has very similar options. Um, overlay has its own options, mainly just what kind of context is it. Uh, dialogue has its options, blah, blah, blah. You, you get what I'm saying. Each of one of these, whatever you select, it's going to change the options you have. So, like I said, we're going to focus on message box today. Um, and here are the options for the message box. We will get into this uh, towards the end, honestly. To the right, we have elements. And elements are all the... Um, elements that make up your user interface and so what we do we click this little plus button right here this nice little green button click it and we get some different options here so we have gauge we have list we have pane we have picture templated list and text um, most of these are pretty I mean these should be Pretty self-explanatory there might be some confusion between list and templated list we're not going to go into that today we'll get into that uh, on a future interface video because as you can see there is a lot to touch on in this one section um, but for now we're gonna do pain because my life is pain no I'm just kidding uh, we're gonna do pain and we are gonna do one two texts okay I'm going to add one more thing in later, but this is what I'm going to start with. Pane and two texts. We're going to click the pane first. What the pane is, is basically it's going to be the background. It is the it is the, the window where all the, the things happen. It's the dialog box window. It's your the the menu window, blah, blah, blah. You get it. So when you click any of these down here, you get customization for that particular element, okay? And as per usual, we're gonna name it background BG. BG, I can't, you guys, I have a hard time. Okay, we're gonna name it BG. I'm just gonna go ahead and name these two also while we're on the naming thing, okay? So I'm gonna name this one um, header. I'll do, I'll do like a real programmer, header text actually real programmers don't do capital right is that right header text and we're gonna do body text okay am I a real programmer now I don't I doubt it anyway we'll click BG we're gonna go back here and right below name we have appearance uh, we're gonna select our background just like selecting our sprite sheet or a tile sheet we click the three little dots and if you've been with me since the beginning you'll remember that I uh, imported st. Edwards games is games is um, UI assets so we have he's provided a lot of really cool options here um, you go through all these you can you can look at them these are all provided with architect I actually really like this one to be honest with you it's pretty plain I, or it's it's very it's it's even labeled generic but I, I like this this looks good so I'm gonna use this one and click OK and BAM look at that suddenly we have we have something here something's happening and here you can change the color mask you can see so if you just wanted to start with that as as a basis but you want to change the color you can do that here it's kind of a nice shade of bluish purple I lost it um, and you turn the alpha down which is like a transparency so we don't need to do that but I'm gonna make it it really doesn't matter for this dude um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go plain Jane for right now, okay? Because I will spend too much time sitting there tweaking a color, and you guys do not care. Then right below that, if you kind of get it dialed in a little bit, and you want to shift the hue just a smidge, you can do that here. Strategy is how you're going to defeat the enemy. No, it's um, you have two options. It's either component or stretch. So stretch will take the image that you the background image. And it will, like the name implies, it stretches it. You can see it looks a little different now. Uh, component, uh, it, 
Oh, how do I explain this in smart people terms? Um, I'm gonna botch this, I know it. I think it takes, it, it like divides it up into like nine sections and, oh man. Throw up a lock says, throw up a lock says right now. Anyway, we got component, we got a stretch. I like component, component works really well. But that's what those do. Context will become important later. For a simple dialog box, it does not matter. Down below, we have position. We can add margins to the window itself. But really, what we want to look for is the relative width and the relative height. Uh, this is a really nice little system to where you can just resize it here. Uh, so let's cut the relative. Let's start with the height. Relative height. We'll cut it down to like 50. All right, well, you can see it cut it in half, relative height. And because we are set to component on our strategy, it's still keeping it really nice and um, pretty. If I did stretch on that, you could see, well, it's still pretty, but you can see it's got the fatter size, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, tangent. So we're gonna set the relative height. I think maybe I can go a little thinner than this. I'm gonna go 40, 40 ish works. And then relative width, I you know you this I should mention this red uh, section. This is a preview of your window. So this is how like this is how close to the edge of the screen your dialog box will be. And you know there's nothing wrong with this, but I think a lot of us probably wouldn't want it that close. So I'm going to you can you can like type in the values here, or you can let me go back to 100. Um, if you have a mouse wheel, you can just mouse wheel it. That's nice. You can also do uh, up and down keys on your keyboard. Whatever's clever, whatever works for you. But we'll set it to 90 so we have a little bit of an edge, but you see, oh, it's closer here than it is over here. Well, then we just right up above, we have relative X and Y. And, um, we adjust the position here and so a good way of explaining it was from one of our community members was all right our relative width is 90 so there's an extra 10 percent we're not accounting for right so half of 10 is five so just put in five on the relative x and look at that we got five percent here five percent here beautiful right amazing shout out to baz okay so then same thing we want to set our y position uh we will i'm just going to type this one in i'm going to go like because i want it down at the bottom of the screen so i'm going to go like 75 oh that's way too much i'm going to go Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight looks good Sorry for the brain fart there. Something like that, that looks pretty good, right? So now whenever we have a dialog box and we reference, we'll get into this in a second, but if we reference this particular message books, the dialog will pop up here. Okay, pretty neat, right? But we're just getting started. Next, we are gonna go, let's go to body text first. Okay, I know I did them out of order, but we're gonna go to body text. So here, one of the first, you know, we got our color, we got drop shadow color, so you can add that, if you, you know, when we get to it. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but blah, blah, blah. We have font family. Now, if you see a click here, nothing happens, right? There's still a default font if you don't define this, but what you want to do here, I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, so I save my stuff. Over below on the left, uh, uh, below user interfaces, is font families. We're gonna click font families. We're gonna resize. We're gonna add, I'll just add three for now. And here we go. We're gonna, um, we're gonna call it Foont1. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm the way I am. Uh, and then we define here, it's just like all our other assets. You know, we just click on one of these and we pick out what we want. And so, we have some from St. Edward Games again. We don't get a preview right here, but um, but that's okay. Um, I'm actually gonna come back up here to like a standard font. 
just because these ones are labeled regular blah blah blah. Uh, we'll go with Avadia. So I'm on, I believe I clicked normal font. So I'm going to click Avadia Sans Libre regular. Okay. Then I got to define my bold font. I'm going to click bold. Define my italic. I don't have to do this all right now, but I am. Define my italic. I'm just showing you guys. Then we have bold and italic. Bold, italic, bam. You can uh, specify if this is a pixel font. And if it is, you can adjust the alpha value to test against wind clamping anti-aliasing, of course. Right? This isn't a pixel font, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But we got Foont1. Um, so we're going to go back to user interfaces. We're going to go back to message books. We're going back to body text. And look at there. We got Foont1. And we have these other two blank options or for because I just I made three, but they do nothing for us. Right? Okay, so then we have our font size. I'm going to set it to be like 32. That feels good. Horizontal alignment, this uh, this determines how it aligns horizontally within the element. Does it align at the start? Does it align in the, the middle? Or does it align towards the end? So I think it's like left, center, right justification. Um, anyway, so then right below here, it says text. Now, don't get confused. Because we're just setting up a interface here, we don't actually define our dialogue texts here um, that comes in entities that's that's where you determine like what the actual messages say but this is just going to help us um, visualize what any dialogue will look like right so I'm just gonna um, hold down a and have it scream into the void you can see it screaming up here okay that's, that's enough screaming I think that's probably good why did I do that? Well, like I said, this is just a sample for to see how how it will appear in context. Uh, real quick, we have just below there, we have drop shadow, we have word wrapping, uh, we have vertical alignment. Not going to mess with that stuff. What I want to do is come down here. Again, we have relative X, relative Y, and relative width. Let's first, let's get this down here let's see 50 69 nice uh, okay so there's that but you can see it's still poking out on the sides right well that's where the relative width comes in let's start scrolling down with the relative width oh and you see okay it's it's squeezing in there um, but we need a little bit more room for what we're doing let's start with 80 we bump the Relative X over. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So now... Something about like that, roughly. So if you have any dialogue, it'll basically appear like this. But that's not super stylized. That's We're still not nearly where we want to be, right? Um, but we are getting somewhere. Alright, but before I proceed much further with this... I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna jump around a little on you. I'm gonna jump over here to header text, all right? Uh, same thing, we got Foont1, we're gonna change it to 32. And instead of screaming into the void for my text, I'm going to type in name. Um, because this is going to be the header uh, like the, where the character names pop up. You guys, you've, you've played RPGs before. You know how it goes. So, we got name, but it's popped up there. We gotta do the same thing. So let's drop our relative Y, 64. Nintendo 64. Um, oops, I went the wrong way. We're gonna throw our name over here. Okay, so now, when we get to our entity, I should probably just go ahead and show you actually. Click our entity button. Go to the entity. Oops. Pay no attention to those. That wasn't definitely wasn't from a test that I was doing. Um, over here in the script, 
you right click, you go to message, display static message, okay? And now you can see, so our header, where we typed in name just now, whatever we type in here, uh, Google Gobble, whatever we type in here will appear as that name text in that position, and whatever we type in here is the eternal endless scream, right? But we're still not quite done. I know you're you're like, what? How much more? This, it's okay. It's all right. Just calm down. People are starting to talk. Let's go back to our database. This, I mean, it technically should work. We still have one more thing to set over here to get it to work, but it's still not super stylized, right? I mean, it's just kind of plain white text. Let's go to the header text and let's change the color. Let's, uh, let's make it to where the names are kind of this nice green color, greenish. Right? So now whenever somebody talks, their name pops up in that green color. So Google Gobble would be green, and then the endless void here, right? But what if, what if, open your mind up real wide now, what if we wanted to have a portrait right here, as you generally do in JRPGs? Well, this is where we need to add a, another element. We need to add a picture. Bam, all progress gone. No, see this, this red, uh, this is, uh, we just need to reposition. The same way we did the relative X and Y and stuff on here, we need to do with the picture. Oh, and I just, I just did something without telling you guys. You got these little eyeballs, so if you wanna hide something, just click the eyeball. And then obviously the X closes it, or deletes it. You have these arrows so you can move them around, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and if you, why would I want to move them around? Because whatever is at the top here is actually in the bottom layer. So if I move BG up, oh, well, it doesn't display there, but um, it's not showing on the preview. Anyway, the way it renders is that this is at the bottom, so below the text, and then these are above BG. So when you're doing panes and stuff, put them towards the top of the list, and then any font or pictures or anything, uh, they go below the panes. Got it? Anyway, rant over. So let's go back to our picture. We're going to name this profile. Nope, no capitals. I'm a programmer. I'm legit. All right, and there's a bunch of options here. We can set an image, we can set a sprite, we can, but what I want the engine to do is actually call the image or sprite uh, in the individual entities, in the individual dialog boxes. So for this purposes, I won't set that here. Uh, you know, color mask, alignment, none of this stuff really matters for a message box All right so anyway with enough rambling we're gonna set the relative width and the relative height uh, let me I needed something small so let's it's gotta be way smaller than that too um, let's go down maybe 10 percent 10 percent oops 10% and then let's set our relative X and our relative Y and we just kind of get it into position the way we think it should look it definitely needs to be you know you just kind of mess with the values here I want a square So let's do something. Let's do something about like that, right? Oh, but, but, you say. 
Now the name and half the dialogue is... Uh, I'm sorry. That's probably offensive. Uh, but now, uh, this is all covered up. So, let's come back over to header text. Let's move the name over here. Let's go to body text. And we have to adjust the relative width. We're going to shrink it down. Uh, something about that-ish. And then we're going to adjust the relative X. Get it to where it fits good in there. Here, I'm actually I'm going to delete two A's because that bothers me. It doesn't matter, but it bothers me. That's not bad, right? That's maybe... Oh, goodness. Something about like that, right? Uh, let's go back to the profile. I'm, uh, now I'm just tweaking out. Now I'm just uh, overly messing with the settings. That looks good. The, I, this, this is solid, all right? So let's apply. But before we go to our entity, the last thing I want to do here is you come to these options here that I, I pointed out at the beginning. And you might know where I'm going with this, but we have header element, we have body element, and we have picture element. Header text, body text, profile. All right. So now we've assigned basically in the message box, the header element is this green name. The body element is this screaming into the void, the ah. And the picture element is this red square. All right? So that's that. We're going to click OK. We're going to come to our, our entity, man. We already set up a static message. We're going to click it again. But we have Google Gobble as its name. We have, here, I'm actually going to change this to no, it's fine. It's fine. If I was smart, I'd be actually making a like legit game, but I'm not. Um, but now we have portrait, and I don't actually have a portrait of the Lich Man, so I'm just gonna go. Um, ah, that might that, that'll workish. So we're gonna use this purple man. Um, if you remember from the sprite things, we get we gotta set. Our frames, it's a profile picture, so we just need one and one. I remember the numbers. It's 144 and 144. If you don't know how I got those numbers, watch the Sprite Sheet 1 video. There may maybe be a card or something, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna click that. This is just to just, just show you guys. And we're gonna click apply. We're gonna click okay. We're gonna run a test. And it, as per usual, it's opening up on my second monitor, but that, that's okay. That's a me problem. So we're gonna walk down here. There's our boy. There's our boy. What's he say? I missed. There we go. Google Gobble is the eternal endless scream. Wholesome. Wholesome. Look at that. We did it. We got a message box. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you one more one more thing, you know, because I could end it here. Realistically, I could end it here, but I want to show you one more thing because we talk to him and it's just uh, bam, all the text all at once. But what if you wanted the text to kind of type onto the screen? And what if you wanted a sound effect to happen while that's happening? Well, we're going to come back to our database. We are going to go to body text. I kind of skimmed over this section. Um, but below, if you on body text, below context, we have character sound and character delay. Character delay, if we add values here, this is how quickly or slowly the font will, or the, uh, the text will type out. Uh, and I found that uh, lower, numbers tend to work pretty good so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do 25. what's that look like i'm gonna move this guy closer too so i have to walk a mile to get to him so we walk over here let's talk to our boy 
Look at that. Not bad. Types out pretty good. But what if we wanted a sound effect? Let's go back to database. That same section we were just looking at. Body text. I'm on body text, yes. And character sound. Ooh, it's the first thing with sound. I know the guy who did the sound. Bit by bit sound to be exact. Um, we're gonna go to interface. Here's all these cool little sounds that some dude did. And let's see, let's do... That one might be good. About cancel so Hmm, okay, I'm just tweaking. Let's do cursor four. And we can adjust the volume or the pitch if you're like, that's that's too much. I'm gonna do negative point to fifty, I guess. Um Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna turn the volume down just a smidge because it's gonna be dialogue and it's gonna be playing that sound like a typewriter. So let's do let's do 75%. Alright, we're gonna click OK. Apply, OK, test, drag it over from my second monitor. We're gonna talk to our boy. There we go. It is the eternal endless scream Google gobble. You're right. He's right. But yeah, I mean, now you have this dialogue box. It's set up. It's ready to go for your entire project. And so if you wanted um, some other ones, some special, you could, I mean, you could copy and paste this exact same thing and then move all the elements up to the top and just call it message books top and just, you know, realign things to where it's, uh, uh, oops, wrong way, wrong way. Where you get things up there, you know, you can do that. And then, um, oh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I met, uh, showed you this, uh, specified. Whenever you set up your static message box here, you got message template. And this is where, see, now we have message books. We got message books top. So whichever one you would want this to pop up as, you just select that. Uh, you can block the input. So if you want the player just to be stuck there or just, just able to proceed with the dialogue, you do that. You keep that on. If you're wanting, you know, we have portrait selected here. But if you go to hero portrait, here you can reference who's in your party like if you want your second character to say something you would just you know do that and then it would bring up the portrait of the the character in party slot two if you are wanting to reference via the character database so it's like i don't necessarily want the um party member in slot two i want the the person in character slot two in the database, meaning, uh, let me go over here. So, oh, I gotta, I gotta, so <laughs> testing stuff. So if you wanted Gab, for instance, you wanted her to say something, um, you would type in, you know, the zero zero one, you would reference that number or you could reference the zero zero three. That makes sense. So you can do all that here at instance reference and unique ID. You can also use portrait expressions. So if you go even further with it, you can, uh, if you have one of those, well, like the portrait sheets and it's like one character, but they have eight different expressions for, you know, anger, happy, blah, 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 blah. You can reference it here. Pretty cool, man. Pretty customizable. And yeah, you can offset the X and Y here. So I think you can override the positioning. In fact, let me test that. Let's just do offset 50. Let's go back to portrait. Offset Y 50. Let's apply. Make sure I'm teaching y'all right. Saying the right things. Talk to our boy. Yep. See, now it's offset 50. It's down, down 50 
or 50 pixels is off. So you wouldn't even have to set up the, uh, oops, going the wrong way. You wouldn't even have to set up a message top if you didn't want to. You wouldn't have to set this up. You could just do it here. You could do negative uh, 100 and then let's run over here and then bam. Yeah, so you could do it that way. Whatever's clever, you have options is the point. But anyway, I think that probably covers enough for the message boxes for now. Uh, there's, a, as you can see, not, I mean, not just message boxes, but the user interfaces section, you can see it gets, dude, I love this. It, it's gonna get so crazy. We're gonna get crazy with this. And it's gonna be awesome, I'm gonna love it. You guys are gonna love it. You're gonna make the game of your dreams. But anyway, that should do it for today. Uh, once again, my name is Bert. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment and let me know um, what you think of the user interface section. Do you think it's uh, the most amazing feature of this engine? Do you th uh, are you gonna make are you gonna customize your windows to be like a specific game? Like, do you want to make a Final Fantasy style? Uh, user interface. Do you want to make something more like Breath of Fire, etc.? Uh, join the mailing list to stay up to date with all RPG Architect news. We're going to be putting out a monthly uh, update on all the things that have been added into the engine. Join our Discord server to chat with me or the developer Locke or any of the other guys who have been working on like the sample projects or coming up with cool graphics, blah, blah, blah. Come chat with us in the Discord. Um, and be sure, if you haven't already, grab the, the uh, engine on Steam. It's still in early access, but that means that you are getting it at a lower price than you will when it officially comes out, than version 1.0. And if you enjoy my lighthearted commentary, if you enjoy the music and the sound effects that have come with RPG Architect, please do consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash bit by bit sound or you can find more info at bit by bit sound.com thank you guys once again for watching my name is Bert you have been amazing I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great rest of your day bye bye